Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some of my first impressions having used GeForce Now for about two weeks now and share some of the things that I like about it and some of the things that I don't like about it so much. So without further delay, let's go ahead and jump right to it. All right, so one of the things that I like about GeForce Now it's kind of going to be an obvious statement, but it is the fact that it's completely free during the closed beta. But it's not necessarily the fact that it's free, it's the reason why it's free. And as during the closed beta, we should, as end users, expect some bugs along the way, and the full feature set is not going to be here. So because of that, and NVIDIA is aware of that, they're giving the service away for free to encourage people to test it more and not have to worry about how many credits they're using or how many hours they have uh, been playing on the service. This not only encourages us the end users to play more, which gives them better feedback about the performance and the usage of their service, but it also makes it so that if we do encounter issues and errors along the way, we're not out money for a service that isn't correctly working. So it's like a perfect win-win scenario. And this isn't something that I would expect other cloud gaming providers to do simply because GeForce Now is backed by NVIDIA. NVIDIA owns it, and they have a much deeper pocketbook than some of the other options out there on the market. So with that in mind, I wouldn't expect some of the other options to offer a completely free service when they themselves are having to pay a data center for the uh, hosting other servers, or at the very least, provide them a fee for rental, renting out space in the data center itself. So with that in mind, it's a great aspect about GeForce Now, and I like the way that NVIDIA is going forward with it, but it isn't something I would expect from other providers, but it is a great benefit of GeForce Now during the closed beta. All right, so the second feature of GeForce Now that I really like also has some negatives associated with it, but I'll get to those later on in the video. But that second feature is the fact that they have a list of verified games. So where this is cool is the fact that these games have been verified by NVIDIA to run well on their platform. So there shouldn't be any weird bugs that pop up, at least not for the most part. Um, I'm sure there could be something weird and random that might pop up uh, eventually, but the bugs you should experience in the games should be something that you would experience on a local desktop and shouldn't be unique just to the cloud gaming platform. So this is cool because you shouldn't have to play through a game and have weird bug issues related to the way that they might capture the display or how the mouse and keyboard is transmitted over the internet. So it's nice to have that so that you, that you the end user, doesn't end up wasting time trying to play a game or buying a game that you should think you might be able to play on their platform and not in ending up able to play that game. And this is gonna be ever more important in the future when people actually don't have local gaming rigs at all and more people move to the cloud as their primary gaming solution. All right, so the next great feature that I love about the GeForce Now platform is the raw performance we're able to achieve and the quality settings we're able to play on. So at the bare minimum, the GeForce Now platform is definitely up there with the Paperspace P5000 and the Shadow Machine in terms of the quality settings we're able to play on and the frame rates we're able to achieve. In fact, I think it actually might be above those platforms if we were able to accurately capture the frame rates. So the downside there is the fact that I can't natively access the Windows desktop, I can't install fraps, and I can't use that as a benchmark tool, and there aren't any other benchmark tools that I'm aware of that I'm able to utilize on the GeForce Now platform. So that means I'm restricted to uh, trying to use fraps locally to capture the frame rates. So in games like Players on Battlegrounds, it doesn't work for the most part uh, to capture the frame rates, and in other games like Fortnite, which I also benchmark, I'm only able to capture what the local client is getting. And for games like Fortnite, I can max out the graphical settings and still be above that 120 FPS mark, which is what the streaming client for GeForce Now is limited to. So I'm not able to actually capture the true frame rate we're able to achieve on uh, the cloud gaming rig. And it could be well above that 120 mark in terms of the in terms of games like Fortnite that aren't as difficult to run so it, it, time will tell about where exactly it is placed in terms of the pure performance uh when i get to benchmarking some games that actually do work lo capturing locally um 
that are a little bit more stressing on the machine and will push the machine a little heavier. So we're not exceeding that 120 FPS limit that the client is able to achieve. And uh, But it will not be 100% accurate uh, simply because we are having to capture from the local machine. But so far the performance has been great. I'm able to max out with ultra graphics a game like Players Unknown Battlegrounds and have a great experience in terms of the streaming uh, quality. Uh, so the video, you have the little bit of motion blur, blur and the quality degrades slightly when you move, uh, but it's definitely one of the best options out there in terms of the streaming quality. Uh, and it is definitely up there in terms of uh, how the latency too. I will be doing some tests in terms of latency later on down the road and trying to do a little bit more scientific other than this one feels great. Uh, this one feels slightly laggy. Um, so keep an eye out for that in the future. But the big point about this uh, talking point was the graphical quality we're able to achieve and the smoothness of that, of the platform in general. All right, so GeForce Now is definitely shaping up to be an awesome cloud gaming option with stellar graphical performance, as well as a great streaming client with very low latency and a very responsive client. But that doesn't mean everything is perfect about GeForce Now. And now I'm going to go into some of my complaints about GeForce Now. After having tested GeForce Now for a couple weeks now, I really only have one complaint with the service, or rather a couple of complaints that all boil down into a single root cause. And that is the fact that NVIDIA is operating a closed catalog for the GeForce Now platform. So this actually ties into a feature I was saying earlier, talking about earlier in the video that I said it was a positive feature. And that is the fact that NVIDIA has a list of approved games to run on the GeForce Now platform. This is great because it ensures a better end user experience, but it does mean it does restrict what games you're able to play on the platform. For example, games on EA's origin access plan, you can't access through the GeForce Now client, at least at this point in time. And that's a great option for budget gamers because you can pay a low monthly fee and have access to a whole host of games, including Battlefield 1, play those for a month or two, and then cancel your subscription and play games from your Steam library, for instance. So it's a great option to try out a whole bunch of games for a low monthly fee, kind of like a Netflix style setup. So with GeForce Now, having a limited library is a negative and, and a positive. It's kind of like a double-edged sword. There are benefits and there are all drawbacks. They do have a workaround though for Steam libraries. So you can click on your account and then click Manage Steam. That'll open up your Steam client like it was a game, uh, how GeForce Now would normally open a game and opens your Steam library instead. With this, you can install any game on your Steam library as if it was a, an a approved game on the GeForce Now catalog. But there are some drawbacks to this too because these games haven't been added to the approved list. There might be issues, but at least you have the option to play games from your Steam library that aren't added to the approved list on GeForce Now. And there are a lot of older games that aren't as popular that aren't on the GeForce Now approved list. So this is a great way to at least play those games if they're on Steam. But there are still catalogs out there that are not currently on NVIDIA GeForce Now at all. And that is a pretty big drawback, in my opinion. In addition, this kind of ties into the closed catalog too, but you can't install or you can't access the native Windows desktop, which is a downer to me just because I'm used to having that capability. So you can't install apps like Fraps, for instance, which is what I use to capture the frame rates of games when I'm doing my benchmarks. And that's not a game killer for most people, but you also can install other applications on the GeForce Now servers such as OBS if you wanted to stream from the cloud or if you wanted to do something along the lines as capturing footage straight from the cloud and throwing that in a Dropbox for instance you can't do any of that with the GeForce Now platform which is a a pretty big negative in my opinion. In addition uh, you can't use the GeForce Now platform as a kind of a dual purpose machine uh, if you don't have a high-end machine on at your house anymore because you move have made the move to cloud gaming but for instance if you're like me and do a little bit of youtube kind of as a hobby and you want to have a video editing machine you still have to have a high-end machine because you can't use your geforce now machine as a dual purpose machine like you could with other options out there such as paperspace and parsec 
So there are some negatives to having a closed catalog, but there are some benefits such as having a better end user experience. So you kind of have to weigh uh, that situation for you personally, whether how big of an impact that will have on you. And hopefully by the time GeForce Now exits their closed beta, they will add more options such as Origin to the available catalogs. Right now, as far as I'm aware as uh, where uh, you can play games from Steam and also you play, uh, but there aren't any other catalogs available, at least not yet that I'm aware of. All right, so that pretty much sums up all my first impressions and thoughts of after having tested GeForce Now for about two weeks. So on that note, NVIDIA has a ton of great things going for them in terms of the future of their cloud gaming platform. There's a lot of great things already in the client and if the closed catalog doesn't impact you too much, if you primarily play games from Steam or pretty much exclusively play games from Steam, then you're pretty much set and GeForce Now could very easily be the cloud gaming option for you. Of course, if the closed catalog does impact you and is a negative for you, then there are definitely other options out there on the market, such as Shadow, as well as Paper Space combined with Parsec. So in the end, it's gonna be very excited to see where the future takes GeForce Now. Hopefully we see them open their library to other uh, platforms such as Origin in the future so that we can see a enlarged game library of games that have been approved to run on their platform. But in its current state, it's definitely a great experience and games that are on the approved list run great so far with the testing that I have done. So on that note, Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you found it useful or otherwise enjoyable, give it a big like. I greatly appreciate that. Also, so if you're not already an existing subscriber, smash that subscribe button and stay tuned for more great videos from Thought Provoking Tech. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, Zach out.